Thank you, Stacy. Friends, I would invite you to get out your Bibles or your Bible app or follow along on our screens today as we're going to look at our scripture lesson that we find in 1 John chapter 4, starting in verse 7. Dear friends, let's love each other because love is from God and everyone who loves is born from God and knows God. The person who doesn't love does not know God because God is love. This is how the love of God is revealed to us. God has sent his only son into the world so that we can live through him. This is love. It is not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as the sacrifice that deals with our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us this way, we also ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God. If we love each other, God remains in us, and his love is made perfect in us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So have you ever said yes when someone asked you to do something bold, something audacious, something big that maybe you surprised even yourself when you said yes? Well, today we're continuing in our sermon series for Lent called Love Does, and it's based off of Bob Goff's best-selling book, Love Does. And in his book, he tells all kinds of stories, but one of those stories it's about Bob and, and how he and his wife, Maria, they live on the ocean. And that one day, Bob had an opportunity to say yes to a very bold request. You see, one of their favorite things to do as a couple is that they love to go out and sit on their back porch and they can look at the water and, and there happens to be a boardwalk right along the shoreline. And so Bob and Maria, they often wave as people go by and, and people often wave back, but usually no one strikes up a conversation. That was until the day that Bob met a young man named Ryan that Bob and Maria were at their post, they were sitting on their porch, and Bob waved, and Ryan waved, and then Bob waved, and then Ryan, and then Bob, and then Ryan, and Bob and Ryan. It was getting kind of strange. And Bob had this sense that Ryan wanted to talk with him. So Bob went down to the boardwalk, and, and the very first thing that Ryan said when he introduced himself, he said, hi. My name is Ryan, and I'm in love. Bob said, that's great. Good for you. Ryan went on and he said, and I have a question for you. I really want to ask my girlfriend to marry me, and I walk by your house all the time. Can I ask her to marry me in your backyard? Now, thankfully, Bob is an adventurous soul. So without even hesitating, he said, yes, that's a fantastic idea. Let's get you two engaged. Then Ryan ran off and was nearly floating on air that Bob had said yes. Well, Ryan came back a few days later, and, and they talked again, and Bob asked, how are the plans going? Is there any way that I can help? Now, this time, Ryan was a little bit more hesitant, and he said, well... I have been thinking about something. He said, would it be okay if we had dinner on your porch before I asked her to marry me? Bob said, well, sure, I guess. That sounds like fun. Can I make you dinner as a couple? 
Now, Brian was thrilled, and again, he ran off. And a few days later, he came back and, and asked yet another question. Well, I've been thinking, Bob, would it be okay if 20 of our closest friends <laughs> served us dinner before I, before I asked her to marry me? Now, by this time, Bob was pretty used to these audacious requests. So he said, yes, of course. Well, the next time came around, and the next time, and by the time they had planned the big day, not only were they having dinner, not only were 20 of their closest friends going to be there, they were going to dance on the porch. Bob was going to provide the music. And yes, Bob had a boat, and so Bob was going to take them on a boat ride so that Ryan could pop the question on the boat. Well, finally, the big night came. Everything went great. Everything went according to plan. Ryan and his girlfriend, they had eaten lunch or eaten dinner on the porch. They had danced. They'd gone on their boat ride. And Ryan had got down on one knee, and he had asked his girlfriend to marry him. And she said yes. Now it was time for Bob to surprise Ryan. That somehow in the midst of all of this planning, Bob had arranged for the Coast Guard to quietly follow the couple with their firefighting boat. And so the moment that she said yes, he gave the thumbs up, and they shot off every water cannon that they had. The couple was sprinkled with a thousand kisses of water. What a way to celebrate love. Now that day, Bob felt like he had gotten to be a part, that he was a co-conspirator in this grand affair to sweep Ryan's beloved off of her feet. And it was quite an experience, and Bob couldn't help but think about God, how God loves us with that same kind of boldness, that same kind of audaciousness. And so this is what Bob had to say about the whole thing. He writes, it makes me wonder if the trees and the mountains and rivers are things God planned in advance, knowing that they would wow us. I wonder if God thought that every foggy morning, each soft rain, each field of wildflowers would be a quiet and audacious way to demonstrate his love for us. I don't know if God was a bit like Ryan when he created everything, or if Ryan was a bit like God, but what I do know is that Ryan's audacious love is some of the best evidence I've found of the kind of love Jesus talked about. A love that never grows tired or is completely finished finding ways to fully express itself. Now, I love that last line. That God's love never grows tired. That God's love is never completely finished finding ways to express itself. And in our scripture lesson for today from 1 John, John is talking about love. And he's addressing a church that has lost its way, that's lost its vision. And so John writes to them and says it's really very simple, that love comes from God. That God is love. God took the initiative. God loved us first before we even had a chance to respond to it. And that God's love is shown for us in this greatest expression through his son Jesus. That he would send his only son into the world as a sacrifice to take away our sins so that we might enjoy eternal life with him that begins today. That that is God's audacious love. And that as people of faith, we, we are recipients of God's love that's given to us unexpectedly and undeservedly and unconditionally. This is good news. Amen? Amen. Amen. But we have to remember that it is actually still news to a lot of people today. Because a lot of people don't think about love in that way at all. That many in our world think about love as a conditional thing because that's how we experience it with one another as human beings. That there's a lot of us who think about love as a reward for good behavior. We think about love as, if you love me, then I will love you. That if you do what I want, then I will love you. 
that if you become the person that I want you to become, then I will love you. That if you get your life together, then I will love you. That if you do what I want, then I will love you. That as human beings, we have this tendency to love each other conditionally. And so we think that that's how God operates as well. But God doesn't love like this. God is love. That God's love is so much deeper and wider than we could ever imagine. That God loves us unconditionally and audaciously. Now, over and over again, we encounter the most beautiful examples of God's love, especially through stories in the Bible. Now, can you think of a story from Scripture and how it shows us just how audacious God's love is? Now, I think of the story of the parable of the prodigal son. That this son went off and squandered the inheritance of his father, That is, he is so heartbroken, so beat down, that the only thing that he can think about is to go home and beg his dad to take him back as a servant. But his dad doesn't do that. That his dad sees him coming from a distance and runs to him as fast as he can to welcome him home. That God is like that. That even when we feel unlovable, God loves us still. And no matter how many mistakes we have made, how far we have wandered from God, God is always waiting expectantly to run to us, to welcome us home. I think about the audacious love of God in the story of the Good Samaritan that showcases how how God loves everyone especially those who are judged and marginalized and ostracized because of where they come from, because of their ethnic and racial backgrounds, that in our story of the Good Samaritan, the Samaritan, the one who no one wanted anything to do with, he's the hero. That God loves everybody. I think about the audacious love of God in the story of the Good Shepherd who left his flock, because there was one sheep missing, just one. But for God, even one missing is one too many, and that God will stop at nothing to bring us back to him. That's the audacious love of God. In the same section of scripture, John He also writes about our relationships with one another because the way we love each other is incredibly important too. And in this section, he makes it so very personal. He writes, Dear friends, if God loved us this way, we also ought to love each other. That no one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God remains in us and his love is made perfect in us. That as people of faith, we are called to make God's love real and how we treat others and how we love others and how we show kindness to others and how we care for others. That no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. The late Reverend Carlisle Marney, he talks about a man who was once asked, have you ever seen God? Now, it makes me wonder, how would I answer that question? Now, have I ever seen God? And the man thought about it, and then he responded, No, but I have known a couple of Jesuses in my lifetime. Friends, that's what John is talking about. No one has ever seen God, but what we can see is we can see God's love at work in people's lives. So where have you seen God at work in somebody else lately? I don't know about you, but sometimes reading the news can be a little discouraging. But from time to time, we run into those stories that just help us to know that God is still working. And a few weeks ago, I ran into one of those stories about something that happened in Texas. I'm sure as many of us know, Texas was hit with dangerously cold temperatures and so many people lost electricity and water in their homes. It was a very dangerous situation. And there was a man named Jim McInvall. 
Now, Jim is better known as Mattress Mac. He's a business owner, and he owns a couple of furniture stores down in the Texas area. And so when this happened, he opened up his stores so that people would have a safe place to go. Because what better place than a business that has sofas and recliners and tables and mattresses? That over 300 people slept at his store for several days to ride out the cold spell. That over a thousand people, they came in during the day to warm up, to rest, to use the restroom. And Jim and his staff, they provided hundreds of meals to their guests. Now for Jim, this wasn't just a matter of being nice, although it was nice. For him, it was deeper than that that it was a matter of faith. In an interview with a local news station, he said this, my parents taught me that the essence of living is giving. My church taught me that to whom much is given, much is expected. That this is what we were put on earth to do. That it's to help other people. Friends, God's love, it never grows tired. God's love is never completely finished finding ways to express itself. And so today, my prayer for all of us is that we would embrace that audacious love that God offers to us. But that we'd also look around at those ways that we can share it. In big ways, in small ways. But taking the time to go out of our way, to audaciously love and care for others, knowing that God went out of his way through Jesus to audaciously and unconditionally love us. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for your audacious love. We thank you for the people in our lives who show us, God, that you are working. And we thank you for the opportunity to share your audacious love with others. God, we know that love can be something that's hard for us to talk about. We know that sometimes our hearts get broken, O oh God. And so we pray for the mending of your Holy Spirit to put us back together again. God, to show us that your love is different, that your love is deeper and wider than any love that we could possibly know, and that there is nothing, nothing, that can separate us from your great love. God, help us to embrace the audacious love that you give to us and help us to share it. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, our Christ. Amen. Friends, one of the most powerful ways